This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello, today we'll use Arnold Camera's settings in order to get into the chest of this skeleton. It's actually quite nice, don't you think? Uh, this is a, a GPU rendering, I think it took 16 seconds, it's a very high resolution with uh, quite uh, some anti aliasing here. So, this is uh, the skeleton I got and this is actually what we've just seen when I re-render it. You see what it looks like and how fast it is being rendered with a graphics card. So this skeleton has a nice chest and we're gonna uh, go inside of that chest. But before uh, I show you how to get in there, pretty trivial actually, uh, I show you where I got it from. I got it from TurboSquid and it was created by C.V.B. Truong and he's been a member there since uh, 2011, very, very early really and he's selling 144 products for example this dinosaur and uh, what I got for free and what you can get for free is this skeleton it's called a Skeleton Maya Rig and I really appreciate it and uh, I'm happy to use it. It comes as a Maya ASCII file and I uh, just import it. It has a mental ray uh, shading network which I just skip and I uh, just use a standard uh, shader here. It arrives in the scene with lots of controls for animating this skeleton and that's something I won't do. You see I'm in the perspective camera and the reason why I see this frame and the grayed out area here in the, in the surrounding is because I chose view and under camera settings resolution gate. Usually you don't see a gate, you, uh, you get a, a different view here, uh, but uh, with a gate you can actually decide what area is going to be rendered. and. Uh, I introduced a second camera which is called Perspective 1 and I animated that camera. Let's have a look where it is. Can you see it? It's behind the rib, ribs here. That's the camera and the animation of the camera goes like this. It basically, let's go to the very beginning, it's uh, behind the head and then it descends and slightly on the left side through this rib bone here and it settles there. So nothing really tricky, two keyframes. One is here, the starting point, and one is the ending point. And if I wanted it to go a little bit further forward, uh, I would just set another keyframe here with uh, the camera just moved uh, a little bit forward. The result of the animation looks like this. And this is the standard setting for this camera here. It's a standard Maya camera basically. The next thing I tried out was using a fisheye lens setting. I go to perspective to the new camera I have here, this camera here and under the perspective shape I can go down to Arnold, open this section and here I see the fisheye. The standard thing is perspective but uh, here I use the fisheye now. When I render it, it's rendering the perspective uh, shape here. We need to render the perspective one shape. This is my extra camera, the camera in the rib cage. And now I see the fisheye. And in the animation it looks like this.
when I'm dealing with a fish eye, I would usually choose render setting which is square. Let us try this out. Let's go to the render settings here and further down here I have render uh, the rendered camera is the perspective one camera and that's fine uh, but here I can go to a square setting for example the 2k square so let's re-render it now and now you see the fish eye makes sense Fish eye is a square thing, it's uh, just a round lens. When I go back to the beginning, this is the head from the back with the teeth. Now let us try another lens, and for that purpose, we change the resolution again. We change the resolution from 2K square back to a normal resolution like full 1024, for example. Instead of the fish eye, let's go for cylindrical which is a panorama thing really let's go to the very beginning here what it looks like with a cylindrical rendering it's uh, a rendering with a graphics card so this is the cylindrical distortion here I don't really know what to use it for the VR ca camera is very interesting and the VR lenses of course have the you have two lenses in your VR goggles and you project them side by side usually and not over and under left eye and right eye only and uh, you can have an eye separation here of 0 0.65 which is the default or just a little bit more and uh, eye to neck etc uh, very few settings really but this is the result you get so there are two images here. This is the separation line and actually I changed the render settings again to a 16 by 9 resolution which is here. It's the HD 1080. So if you have uh, VR goggles you can appreciate that scene and you see everything. Back, front, all the sides, you see the feet, the hands, etc everything is in the, in this scene here in this rendering so that's the VR side by side setting here uh, the perspective is the one we used to the autographic is not really interesting in our context it's an orthogonal camera uh, basically like the top view and the side view etc the fisheye we've seen that and the spherical one is one of my favorites really um, the spherical camera is a straightforward 360 degree panorama and you need an app in order to really appreciate this image for example I use a software which is called Rico Theta or Theta and uh, this is a German interface it means drag and drop your image here or just open it here that's what I'm gonna do and now with a with the with a mouse you can navigate in this scene here so this is all the top of the sky dome light which I have here. The skeleton is placed on a on a black plane, I guess. That's the default settings here. I just I didn't do anything about it. I just loaded it into Maya with and uh, adjusted nothing else. So these are the hands, not the feet, but the feet are there as well. Actually, let's have a better look at the feet. In order to do that, uh, we need to go further down. Oh, the feet are there. Okay. So why not choose this perspective for now? Re-render it using the spherical projection. It's 2800 by 1620 currently and with anti-alias settings of 7. So it renders seven anti-aliasing passes. 23 seconds. Save that image and load it into the 360 degree app. And up there is the head, of course. Yeah.
And uh, with this, I'll leave you for now and have a nice day. Bye bye.